Looking to take your financial knowledge to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to Ask Ralph. Offering accounting, technical, and financial advice. Whether you're looking to save taxes or improve your business, he's got you covered. Here's your host of Ask Ralph, Ralph Eastup Jr. Hello and welcome back to the Ask Ralph Show. My name is Ralph Eastup. And if you've joined us before, I say welcome back. If you're a new listener to the show, I definitely would love to hear from you. The best way to get in touch with me is to send me an email. And you can send an email to Ralph, that's R-A-L-P-H, at askralph.com. That's A-S-K. R-A-L-P-H dot com. If you've got any questions or you're interested in actually being on the show, we'd love to hear from you. You can also reach us at our office at 302-659-6560. Well, let's jump into an interesting topic as we get ready to close out this year. I thought I'd talk about the top 10 most overlooked tax deductions. Now, I say this as an overlooked tax deduction. These are for people who generally don't you know, use somebody to do their taxes. And, you know, this tax year is going to be an interesting tax year. We had a staff meeting the other day. We were talking about what to expect this year. And I really think this year is going to be a dynamic tax year in that I think there's going to be a lot of surprises. And if you've listened to my radio show the last few weeks, um, you can also go back to our website and download our podcast on the Ask Ralph site. Uh, You can get those wherever you get your podcast. But I talked a lot about, you know, There's been a lot of tax changes, and I'm very concerned that a lot of people, when they go to do their taxes, are going to be surprised at the results. But we're not going to talk about that today, but let's talk about the top 10 most overlooked tax deductions. And you know, you want to get your share of more than $1 trillion in tax deductions. 45 million people itemized their deductions in 2017. Now, they say that's going to change for 2018 now that they've raised the standard deduction to 24000 for married filing joint, but let's endeavor to talk about some of these things anyway. Now, first one is state sales taxes. This write-off makes sense primarily for those who live in states that do not impose an income tax. Now, if you're listening to me in my home state of Delaware, you know, we do have an income tax in the state of Delaware, but we don't have a sales tax. So this doesn't necessarily pertain to those of us who live in Delaware. But if you live in another state, especially a state that doesn't have a state income tax, let's talk about Florida or Tennessee, those are a couple at the top of my head, you want to keep track of that because you need to choose between deducting state and local income taxes or state and local sales taxes. Now, here's some big winners on this one. If you purchased a vehicle, boat, or airplane, you get to add the state sales tax you paid to the amount shown in the IRS tables for your state to the extent that the sales tax you paid doesn't exceed the state's general sales tax. The same goes for home building materials you purchase. So if you're in a state where you're paying a sales tax, um, you want to keep track of those things. And when you know when you go to prepare your tax returns, make sure you add those together. Now, remember, in 2018, your itemized deductions for state and local taxes is now limited to $10,000 per year. So I think this is one of those areas where I think people are going to see a bit of a, a change in the tax structure. So keep that in mind, but you've got that $10,000 threshold. Number two, reinvested dividends. Now, this really isn't a tax deduction per se, but this is something a lot of people miss. And that is the ability to subtract the actual mutual fund dividends that have been automatically reinvested. So let's talk about a simple example here. Let's say that you have a a mutual fund and this is to pick American funds. And every year that American funds pays you a dividend. Well, rather than taking those dividends out by check or cash, you basically reinvest those dividends. So what happens is when those dividends are paid to you, you get a 1099 at the end of the year. And if you come to somebody like me, we're going to file your taxes. We're going to include that as your income. But what you need to remember is that dividend that you pay tax on then becomes a basis adjustment to the stock. So let's say, for example, in that mutual fund, you know, like a, let's use a real simple example. Let's say you had a thousand dollars worth of that stock and then the dividends this year were fifty dollars. Well, since you've paid tax on that fifty dollars, your basis in that stock is now one thousand fifty dollars. So when you go to sell it, your capital gain, if you have one, will be reduced by these reinvested dividends. So that's why I'm saying it's not really a tax deduction, but it's something you want to make sure you consider because if not, you're going to be overpaying your taxes. Next one, out-of-pocket charitable contributions. It's hard not to remember those big charitable contributions. Let's say you gave away a car or you gave a big check to your church or something along those lines. Maybe there was a big, you know, uh, in a state or something. But 
a lot of people overlook those little odds and end things, you know, that's the things that you may do while you're out, you know, out, out shopping, or maybe you pick up some things for an adopt a family or something like that. You need to make sure you keep track of those things because those are all charitable contributions. And what a lot of people don't know about is if you drove for your charity in 2018, remember you can deduct 14 cents per mile. So let's say you're one of these people who's involved with, you know, some sort of charity where you're out in and doing work. Maybe it's even attending meetings or, you know, delivering food baskets to the people who need them. All those things uh, are, are charitable mileage. You want to keep track of those. And what you're going to need to do is get yourself a, like my son used to watch this show. I can't remember what it was called. Blues Clues, I think. And they had a handy dandy notebook. Well, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have your handy dandy notebook. And what you're going to do is you're going to keep track of these things. So what I recommend you do is put in the date. You want to put in your beginning odometer, your ending odometer, and then you want to put the total mileage and where you went for what purpose. That way, when you get to the end of the year, you can go back and look and say, okay, um, looks like, you know, I did this for this organization. I did this or, and it can add up. I mean, 14 cents a mile is not a great amount of money, but if you're routinely, you know, doing something for charitable work, uh, you know, keep track of those things because that can definitely be a huge tax deduction for you. Now, again, like I said, these are things that you can just consider. Now, number four, student loan interest paid by mom and dad. And this is a bit of a change. Okay. In the past, if parents paid back a student loan incurred by their children, no one got a tax break. To get a deduction, the law said you had to both be liable for the debt and actually pay it yourself. But now there's an exception. And that exception reads like this. If mom and dad pay the loan, the IRS treats it as though they gave the money to their child who then paid the debt. So a child who's not claimed as a dependent can qualify to deduct up to $2,500 of student loan interest. Now, remember, with student loan interest, you're going to need to have a form 1098E. Now, I will tell you from practice, a lot of people forget about that form because a lot of cases, they don't mail that out to you. So if you've got, uh, if you're in college yourself or you've got a dependent who's in college, you want to make sure that you impress upon them the need to go to the financial uh, aid website or to the school's website and get that form, uh, you know, that 1098E, because you're going to need that in order to qualify for that student loan interest. You're also going to need it for some of the credits that are available, the American Opportunity Credit or the Lifetime Learning Credit. So it's really important that you keep track of those things. Now, this was the first four of the things we talked about as the top overlooked tax deductions. So make sure you join us um, for our next session where we're going to talk about the next uh, se several of these next ones that you can still think about for 2018. And it's really not too late to take advantage of some of these things. So if you missed this first session, um, you know, you go back and listen to it on our podcast site. Um, and like I said, give us some feedback, you know, send us an email at ralph at askralph.com. And if there's a topic you'd like for us to talk about in this show, you know, I'd love to hear from you. In fact, if you call me right now at 302-659-6560, I will give you a $50 gift card to have your taxes done with our firm this coming tax season. So make sure you call us today. You've been listening to Ask Ralph, brought to you by Sazio Accounting Plus. Please subscribe to and write our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. Our podcast is produced by Carolyn Peters. Thank you for listening and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Ask Ralph Media. You can also hear me each week on 1450 WILM and on 1410 WDOV in Delaware and on the iHeartRadio app. Submit your questions or ideas for future shows by sending an email to Ask Ralph at AskRalph.com. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Sagio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered.